Yo, what is going on everybody? Sinister Skater here and welcome to another Infinite Warfare Armory Analysis. In Armory Analysis, we go in depth and analyze select items in this year's Call of Duty. And in this video, we're going to be looking at something that I've been meaning to look at for a while now. Just haven't gotten to it. And that's movement speed in Infinite Warfare and all the ways that you can run and sprint faster. So we're going to hop right into it. We have a lot to talk about. So much to talk about that. I'm going to be breaking this topic into two separate videos. Today we're going to be talking about the weapon speeds, the base speeds themselves, the man at arms trait, and the momentum perk. And on the next part we're going to be talking about rush down, combat burst, and overdrive and how those affect these weapon speeds. So just to talk about sprinting in general, Black Ops 3 switched things up with movement speeds a lot. Infinite Warfare, however, is similar to the classic Call of Duty movement speed with, of course, a few variations. One thing that you should know is that movement speed depends on the weapon that you have out at the time. It's not based on the heaviest weapon in the class like we've seen in a previous Infinity War game. It relies on what the weapon is that you have out. And that's good because it allows for strategic play and strategic class setups. So let's get into this math stuff. There's a, there's a lot of math here, so we're going to break it down into simple terms. Um, oh, I should probably mention, the main test we did for all the data today was on Skydock. I went into the middle of the map and ran this straightaway dead sprint and then recorded the times. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today to break it down into simple terms. So pretty much there's three main tiers of weapon sprint speeds. And what follows is the times for those weapons. So the fastest weapon sprint speed is at 6.25 seconds and this belongs to the submachine guns, the shotguns, the pistols, the knife, and the fist. All those run at the same speed as the fastest speed which timed out to be 6.25 seconds on this run. The second tier of weapons belongs to the assault rifles and the snipers. These ran this route in 6.5 seconds, which is 0.25 seconds more than our fastest tier. And then our slowest tier belongs to the light machine guns and the launchers, which ran this route in 6.79 seconds. Now there are a few weapons that don't fit this category, they have their own special sprint multiplier. Uh, the K-Bar is a little bit faster than the rest of the assault rifles, it ran it in 6.37 seconds. The Howitzer is faster than the rest of the launchers, it actually runs at the assault rifle and sniper speeds of 6.5 seconds. And then the KBS Longbow is a bit slower than the other snipers, it ran this route at 6.61 seconds. One thing to note while we're talking about sprint speeds is that the rigs don't change your speeds. Like, Warfighter doesn't run faster than Merc, it's not like that. It only depends on the weapons. However, lethal payloads do have modifiers, things like Steel Dragon, the Claw, Reaper, things like that. They're along the times that I've been sharing. I didn't bother testing because you only have them out for like 20 seconds, but they do have modifiers to your sprint speeds. So now that we have weapon speeds out of the way, let's answer the question of how does Merc's Man at Arms trait affect these weapon speeds. Now if you don't know, Man at Arms makes weapons no longer slow your default movement. Now after testing this, no matter which weapon is out, Man at Arms makes you run at the fastest possible speed. I tested this for the assault rifles, the submachine guns, and the LMGs, and it ran this route at 6.23 seconds, which is slightly faster than the fastest tier of the submachine gun shotties and all of that stuff. But just makes your default movement the fastest as possible. You can even switch from like an LMG to an AR, you still run it in 6.23 seconds. I tested that out. Which makes sense because it reflects the in-game stats. Uh, I might explain why the SMG is sitting at like 80 in-game I think on the mobility bar. Man at Arms makes it sprint at the fastest speed, which must be higher than the in-game stat of 80. It might be around 100 or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's how Man at Arms works. Now, the momentum perk. This is a tier 2 perk which allows for faster sprint over a duration of running. The way this thing works is you have to run for about 2 seconds, and then you start to speed up and run at a faster speed until your momentum is broken. For example, by like stopping or sliding, then you have to run again for like 2 seconds, and then your, your sprint will go to a maximum speed. Now I tested this for the submachine guns, ARs, and LMGs, and the submachine guns timed out at 5.93 seconds, the ARs at 6.15 seconds, and the LMG at 6.40 seconds. These are about 0.3 to 0.4 seconds faster than the default run speed, so you do run faster, uh, especially if you're running long distances, you're going to be running way faster than if you were at a default speed, which makes sense because that's what the perk does. However, the momentum perk does allow you to sprint faster than the man at arms 
trait with every weapon except the LMGs and launchers. Those things are so slow that the default movement speed isn't enough to make it viable. Now, if you're wondering if there's any bonus for using mana arms and momentum at the same time, yes, yes there is. I only tested this with the assault rifle, but uh, the assault rifle with momentum and mana arms on at the same time sprinted this route in 5.94 seconds. To compare, Man at Arms only was 6.23 seconds, Momentum had 6.15 seconds, and the base time was 6.5 seconds. The combo allowed 5.94 seconds, which is pretty quick. It's the fastest out of these options, but you have to keep in mind they have to keep sprinting in order to have momentum in effect. And in reality, you're not going to be running at that speed all the time in-game unless you're just running gung-ho and just mowing people down and non-stop running. So that's all for this video. There's going to be another part of weapon speeds going up within a day of this video. I'll have a link down below in the description. But we're going to be talking about a way to move even faster. Yes, we discussed the obvious ways, things that you would first think of when you think about sprinting faster in Infinite Warfare. But I tested a few other rigs and payload traits that uh, let you move even faster, believe it or not. And it's actually more viable than some of these options. So you can look forward to that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and learned something new. Talk to me down below in the comments. Let me know if I missed anything. If you need clarification, anything, I'll be sure to get back to you. But with that, guys, thanks for watching. I'm Simster Skater. Be sure to subscribe for future gaming content if you guys aren't already. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike if you disliked it. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace out.